In the name of the one who was and is and is to come, Jesus Christ, good morning. Okay. We are awake now. And good morning to all of you who may be watching this later from home as we are experiencing a few internet glitches. Uh, but we hope that yeah, you would enjoy this service uh, at the time of your watching. So uh, welcome everyone to Salem as we call ourselves by our first name here, which means peace. Uh, my name is Pastor Jenny Thomas. Uh, community pastor, and it is an honor to serve this congregation. A few announcements for us today. This Sunday, we'll be hearing the message from Dave Klein. Thank you very much, Dave, uh, who will be speaking on God answering prayer. And next Sunday, July 2nd, we will welcome the arrival of our new pastor, Randy Zeiler, uh, and his wife, Beth. Many of you have met uh, Pastor Randy and Beth, and he will be also preaching, and uh, we're offering Holy Communion also in both services next week. Uh, the summer office hours are from 9 to noon, Monday through Thursday. Just so you all know, if you come and the, the office is dark, uh, it's probably because we went home. Okay. <laughs> uh, one important announcement is that we will have a church conference. A church conference is an all invite for every member of the church uh, to decide upon revised salary packages for both Pastor Randy and myself. And that meeting will be Thursday, July the 6th at 6.30. So if you come for pantry day, you can just come on back at 6.30 for a very brief but important meeting on Thursday, July 6th at 6.30. Uh, the parsonage cleanup continues. I believe by my specs that we're on pace. Uh, that's not to say we relax, but we are going to keep up the good work Many of you have participated in that and we sure appreciate it. We will be painting probably rooms through this week and the next and getting that all done before the flooring will be installed. Uh, tomorrow is the beginning of an all sports camp and we'll have Messiah University students here uh, with children of our community in a day camp style. So from 9 to 3, uh, Monday through Thursday, and then 9 to 12 on Friday, we will have kids running around here, and then there'll be older kids running around here. So we can just thank God that our church is open to this uh, community-wide event for our kids in the community to get some fresh air and sunshine. Those are the announcements we have today. Uh, next, I'll invite uh, Susan Huntsberger to come up, and we're going to have the blessing of the prayer shawls, yes. And thank you for this wonderful ministry, Susan. That I'm going to... Something like that since okay. it's seven. All right, today we have... Oh, first of all, uh, fill out a card if you would like to give a shawl, request a shawl, please, and... Put it in my mailbox um, and we'll get to it. All right, today we have Eric, Tyler, Connie, and Carol. All right, wonderful. Please join us in this blessing. Let us pray. In the beginning, Creator God, you formed us and knitted us together and gave of us the breath of life. Send your blessing upon these prayer shawls. Bless those who have woven them with your love and bless those who receive them. May these shawls be a mantle of your healing presence and warmth of your mercy to the weary. In the name of Jesus, our healer, teacher, and savior, and all God's people said, amen. You're welcome. 
Oh, wow, she's delivering them already. I got to go back to work, so I'm sorry. Thank you so much, <laughs> Susan. Thank you. As we are gathered here together in this place, it becomes holy because God has made us holy, and we are going to lift holy praise to God at Kathy's leading, so. Let us rise, join together responsibly to the call to worship. There are times in our lives when we feel empty. Filled with questions to the Lord, questions of frustration and hopelessness. Yet, God is patient and listens to our cries. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on each one of us. Spirit of the living God, change our lives into joyful service to you. And that's what we're going to do. Please join me in prayer. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. You may be seated.
Our scripture reading for today is Mark chapter 11, verses 22 through 26. Jesus answered them, have faith in God. Truly I tell you, if you say to this mountain, be taken up and thrown into the sea. And if you do not doubt in your heart, but believe that what you say will come to pass, it will be done for you. So I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it, and it will be yours. Whenever you stand praying, forgive if you have anything against anyone, so that your Father in heaven may also forgive your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father in heaven forgive your trespasses. This is the word of the Lord. Nope. Yeah. On the job training. Good morning. My name is Dave Klein. A few months ago, Pastor Les told me that he had a vacation day scheduled for June 25th, and he asked if I'd deliver the message that day. I told him that I would. I realized that today would be the interim Sunday in between Pastor Les and Pastor Randy. So, here's the schedule pretty accurately depicted, I think, I decided today would be a good time to talk about accepting and adjusting to change. Then in May, Pastor Les announced that he was going to start his last sermon series on transitions and change. ruh -roh. That'll be the last Jetsons reference this morning. Back to the drawing board. A week or so later, I was having a conversation with my daughter, Chris, and I mentioned that God had answered a prayer of mine. She suggested that I talk about answered prayer. So I give her credit for this morning's topic. Actually, I give God credit for today's topic. He was just speaking to me through Chris. Let's pray. God, we all pray. And we pray for different things, and our style of pray, prayer varies. You don't always answer our prayers the way we want. But sometimes you do respond to our prayers pretty much just how we asked. In our time this morning, help us to learn more about our prayer life and specifically your answers to our prayers. Amen. So we pray. Well, what is prayer? It's a conversation with God. It can be rather formal, like when we recite the Lord's Prayer. It can be public, like the prayer I just prayed. But most of the time, it's one-on-one -on -one with God, a very personal conversation. We often use the analogy of a child and a parent when talking about us and God. If you don't have kids, then just think about a close relationship you have with someone. Most of us, have, most of us love having conversations with our kids, whether our kids are 10 years old or 60 years old or somewhere in between. Think about those conversations. We enjoy hearing what our kids are doing, what's been giving them joy, what's been upsetting to them, what, what goals they've set, what their emotional temperament has been. These are all things that God wants to hear from us in conversation, in prayer. In 1 Thessalonians, Paul states that we should pray continually, not just at mealtime and bedtime, but, but at all times. So we're having these conversations with God and we decide to, to make a request, to ask for something. That's fine. Now, if it's the entirety of your prayer life, then your prayer life is just about those transactions. I need this, please help my brother find a job, please help my Aunt Carol, and so on. And God welcomes our requests, even if that's the only conversations we have with him. However, again, think about your relationship with your kids. If the only time they ever spoke to you was when they needed something, well, that doesn't sound like much of a relationship then, does it? 
So we're going to assume that you're having frequent conversations with God or that you're going to increase those conversations with God. And we've decided that requests are okay. God actually welcomes them. So we're making our requests to God. What should we be asking for? Well, I'm pretty sure it would be inappropriate to ask for something in prayer that causes yourself or someone else to sin. I think I'm on pretty solid ground there. But beyond that, I'm not really in a position to be judging what you do or don't request from God. That's, that's up to you. But I, too, have two suggestions. The first suggestion is not to limit God. Yes, we have a, a reprimand here from Grandma. Seems foolish putting limits on God, doesn't it? Since we know that God is all-powerful. And yet, sometimes we put our perspective and human scope on what we ask God to do. Let's not do that. Second, let's describe the problem to God, describe our need to Him, and let Him provide the appropriate solution. I'm sure you've had situations when your boss has given you a task, and you know more about the problem and the task than your boss does. You think you know what problem the boss is trying to resolve, and you know a better way to resolve it, but the boss has limited you by giving you specific task instructions. You wish the boss had just described the issue and you had talked about the best resolution together. Sound familiar? Well, the same applies to your prayer life. Tell God what's bothering or upsetting you. Ask for his assistance. You can even suggest a solution, but end it with, thy will be done. You, God, know best how to fix this, not me. Let me share a personal example. Here's a picture of my parents. Some of you know that my dad passed away a little over two years ago at the age of 91. Dad lived a great life. When dad died, mom was living in the dementia unit at Luther Acres in Lidditz. Her dementia had progressed pretty far, but I could still converse with her about flowers or we'd look at a scrapbook and see photos. She didn't do very much day to day, but she was content. We told her dad had died, but she didn't remember that. As a side note, nothing's ever all bad. A blessing of dementia is that mom never grieved the death of her husband. Unfortunately, mom doesn't look like this anymore. The dementia has progressed and her general health has declined. There isn't ever a spark in her eye anymore. Never a smile. Since December, she's also become very restless. She's up a lot at night. She calls out help, but she can't communicate what she needs. Now, I'll ask you not to judge me on what I'm going to say next. I think my mom's time here on earth should come to an end. I think it's time for her to join dad in heaven, and that's what I've been praying to God. Well, the doctors at Luther Acres changed her medications about a month ago. Mom isn't asking for help anymore, and she isn't agitated anymore. However, she's in pretty much a constant, almost comatose state. She's either sleeping or sitting totally unresponsive with her eyes closed. When I visit her, I tell her I'm there, I open my Kindle, I hold her hand, and I just read my book. That's it. I'm not sure if she knows it's me. Five minutes after I'm gone, I'm sure she doesn't know that I was there, but she's at peace again. It's not what I ask for in my prayer, but in my heart, all I wanted was for her to be at peace. I didn't think that could happen anymore here on earth. I was wrong. So did God actually answer my prayer? Well, let's review. I asked for mom to be in heaven. She's not. Doctors changed her medication. I didn't ask for that. When I was a much younger man, I think I would have concluded that my prayer to God and the doctor's actions were not related. I would have thought it was just a nice occurrence that the doctors came up with the alternate medications. However, as I've gotten older, I feel my faith has matured. I give God total credit for what happened with mom. I tried to limit him by suggesting a solution. I feel he answered the need that I communicated while he dismissed my solution. I'm going to paraphrase a portion of today's scripture. Do not doubt in your heart what God will do for you. Whatever you ask for in prayer, 
believe that you have received it. Several years ago, I was in a church service where a segment of the service was set aside for specific prayers. I prayed a big ask. A friend had serious health problems, and I prayed for healing, for a miracle, actually. I found out later that day that he had some improvement that same day. Well, was that improvement really because I had prayed my prayer? I think it was. And let me put it this way. If I pray a prayer and what I pray for comes true, and I don't give God the credit, then why make requests to God at all? I had to give God credit for answering my prayer. Now, we do know that God doesn't always answer with a yes, but today we're just focusing on the yeses. I don't know about you, but I love to hear witnessing about the yeses, not just mine, but, but other people's. Does anybody know who this is? Anybody recognize him? It's Paul Harvey. When I was a teen and a young adult, Paul Harvey had a five-minute segment, which would be played on the radio across the country. So Paul Harvey would tell an interesting story, and then he'd tell you a really interesting backstory to what he'd just described, or maybe a surprise ending that you never saw coming. He'd conclude the stop spot by saying, and now you know the rest of the story. I really miss hearing the rest of the story regarding prayers. I'm also concerned that since we don't often hear the rest of the story, we may start to think that God never or rarely answers with a yes. And I just don't think that's true. So I've shared two stories from my life about answered prayer in the affirmative. Now I'm going to ask for participation from some of you. We have a microphone available to bring to you. I'd like to hear some stories from a few of you regarding God answering your prayers exactly as you asked, or like in my case, giving an affirmative response, but not exactly the same as what you asked for. Now I know this is outside most of your comfort zones, but remember two weeks ago, Pastor Les talked about fear and the need to go outside your comfort zones? Pretty good, two different people speaking on the same topic. I'm not asking for nearly as much detail as I just gave you regarding my mom. In fact, I'm looking for just the opposite, just 30 to 60 seconds where you tell us what your prayer was and how God responded. Who would like to go first? Come on. All right, there's Joanne. So we're going to bring her a microphone. Um, about 12 years ago, I had pain in my joints and I just was really sick. And after going to um, doctors, I got medication and was diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis and lupus. But I still had, even with medication, I had flare-ups and all that. Well, I got my prayer shawl. I know that prayers went into this and within that first week that I got the prayer shawl, I started thinking, I don't feel the pain anymore. It's gone away. And to this day, I don't have the flare-ups. I don't have that problem. I still take my medication, but I, I know that all the prayers that went into every stitch of this shawl and all the prayers that I said were answered. So uh, it was just coincidental that Susan brought the prayer shawls in today, and I was thinking about it. Also, they're very warm in this cold place. <laughs> Thank you so much, Joanne, and maybe not so coincidental that Susan brought the prayer shawls in today, I think. Somebody else? Sure, Kathy. Wait till Carrie brings you the microphone. About six years ago, I think it was, I started having knee operations and I realized at that point that it wasn't gonna get any better. So my prayer was to God, okay, here I am. How can I not be a burden to others? How can I still shine light, your light to others? And he answered that with people. Now, first of all, my husband, I gotta give him a shout out. I thought, oh my goodness, his life's ruined because of me now, but 
You know, he bought me an electric chair. We go on walks and hikes, and we have new interests. So he's just been a blessing. But the people of this church, God answered that prayer with you. Um, I'm in the choir. I see many choir members as I look around. And, you know, it, it was Derek Sandstrom at the time, and we, we were singing from up in the loft. And I thought, I can't do this anymore. I can't get up in the loft. And what did he do? He brought the choir down here, and we've been singing down there. And so I've been able to, to keep singing with the choir. Um, the library, I thought, how, how am I going to do the library anymore? Well, he answered that prayer with people like Charlotte Brain here. Ellen Irafito has joined me. Um, back to the Bible class, you know, they've been very supportive. I see members of them around here, too. And one other thing, he answered my prayer with a dream, just like I had, I hate to say it was 30 years ago, <laughs> with the library. But the dream was, why don't you do, a, you know, I woke up and had this idea to do the, the preschool uh, story time that I've been doing Wednesday mornings. But I thought, how am I going to do that? I, I can't carry things well. I can't walk well. Well, there's people that answered. Charlotte, Ellen, Peg's going to join in, Jerry Mahalan. So, yes, God answered my prayer with people, many of you. So thank you. Thank you, Kathy. Yeah, Hal back there. My wife was very ill. She came home from a hospital with ALS on a Saturday. And uh, uh, our whole family was there. And then Sunday night, uh, when she woke up Monday morning, my daughter went and talked to her. And my mother always said to all my kids, I love you, I love you, I love you. She didn't say that to my daughter. My daughter said, I love you, mom. And my mom said, love God. She said, I talked to God last night and prayed. And he told me, when I'm ready to come to heaven, let me know, and I'll bring you to heaven. And Pastor Jenny was there Monday afternoon. Every time anybody went to see her, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, all she did was say, pray to God. Pastor Jenny prayed. Pastor Jenny came back out on Wednesday afternoon and prayed. We all prayed for her. That was Wednesday, or Wednesday afternoon probably about four o'clock. Uh, we were giving her pills or stuff to make her feel good. And uh, my daughter gave her at nine o'clock Wednesday night. I gave it to her at one o'clock Thursday morning. And then when I went to give her her pill or her, her, her thing at five o'clock in the morning, uh, you had to put it in her mouth and then you had to do this to rub her and she didn't feel good. And I woke my daughter up and she had passed away. Probably about 12 hours after we prayed to God that it was time and he took her on time. So when you pray to God, he does answer you. Thank you so much. He was very, very good and still is very, very good. Thanks, Hal. I had mentioned to somebody that I was going to be doing this format and they said, well, what if nobody says anything? I said, that's on God, that's not on me. So clearly God, God is here with us this morning. So thanks so much for your attention and your participation. I prayed to God for assistance in planning, formulating, and delivering today's sermon. So if you think it went well, that's another example of prayer answered in the affirmative. Let's close in prayer. Lord, all of us have room for improvement in our prayer life. We need to be sharing with you constantly throughout the day, like we do with our very best friends and family. And when you answer our prayers and give us what we've been asking for, we need to give you the credit and the glory. Amen.
You may be seated. Lord listens to us children praying. Indeed, thank you very much, Dave, for keeping us on point. Our joys and concerns as they are written here. A joy is all of the rain, praise God, praise God, praise God for the rain. Uh, that Richard and Kathy Hoke are celebrating an anniversary. Happy anniversary. Yay. And for family gatherings, it concerns we lift up are for Mel H., Alan D., Tammy C., Jerry T., Sarah E., and Debbie A. Let us pray. On this beautiful summer morning, we thank you, O God, for you are holy and great. In your Son, Jesus Christ, you have given us nothing less than yourself, and we sing praise to you. Your faithfulness, Lord, and good things surround us. Forgive us when we cannot see the blessings beyond the struggles of our lives. We are here, Lord, and the eyes of our hearts look to you. O oh God, let your loving kindness shine upon us and our children and youth as we still bask in the glow of a wonderful Bible school. And we welcome Messiah University and the children of our community this week for a day camp. Lord, bless all of those hands and hearts this week. O oh God, let your loving kindness shine upon us and all whom we love. We shine upon those who are suffering, upon those who are sick, and upon those who are experiencing grief and loss, some that we have already named. We name also those unnamed from our hearts. O oh God, let your loving kindness shine upon us and those who journey to new places. As we lift up in prayer, Pastor Les and the Towsey family, Let your loving kindness shine upon us and those who will soon join us as we lift up in prayer Pastor Randy and his wife Beth. May our eyes look to your Holy Spirit, Lord, in these changing times. In the love of Jesus the Christ, we offer ourselves to you in this life, following Jesus who leads us in your will and your way, teaching us as followers to say when we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As we have given our hearts in prayer, let us now offer our gifts. As the ushers come forward, we'll receive our tithes and our offerings.
Generous God, source of all abundance, bless now these gifts, we pray. Receive this offering and receive our very lives. Fit us humble and joyful ministry. In your holy and precious name, amen.
thank you again, Dee, and thank you, Pam, for wonderful music this morning. Uh, I would give you the scriptural blessing, uh, blessing upon uh, numbers in the book of Numbers. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.